Hi, welcome to another episode of Money Wisdom. I'm Rolf Dobelli, author of The Art of Thinking Clearly, which explains thinking errors. I'm here to talk about the outcome bias. Take a million monkeys. Let them predict the stock market. It's Monday morning, and you ask the monkeys, will the stock market rise or fall this week? You give them two buttons. If the monkey thinks the stock market will rise, he presses on the left button. If the monkey thinks the stock market will fall, he presses on the right button. On Friday evening, after the closing bell, you check what the market did. Roughly half the monkeys will have been right. Roughly half the monkeys will have been wrong. Send home the ones that were wrong and continue with the ones that were correct. If you do this for about 20 weeks, you will be left with one monkey that was consistently right the whole time. The success monkey. 20 times in a row a perfect market prediction that beats the best trader on Wall Street. If this monkey had played with real money, he'd be a billionaire by now. Imagine what would happen next. The media swoops in to analyze this monkey's every move. How does he get up in the morning? What does he eat for breakfast? Five bananas, 17 bananas, and so on. No two monkeys are identical, so the little quirks of our monkey will be declared to be success principles. But we know that the monkey's fame is based on a thinking error, the outcome bias. A classic example where a great outcome was generated with zero skills and 100% randomness. When we look at the world, all we see are outcomes. We rarely look inside the generator room to learn how these results came about. So our Stone Age brain does something very simple. It says, great outcome, this means a lot of skills in the background. Bad outcome means no skills in the background. In other words, given a great outcome, we tend to overvalue the role of skill and we underestimate the role of luck, of chance, of randomness. What is our tendency to evaluate decisions based on their results, not on the decision-making process mean for investment decisions? Number one, be aware that picking a stock has a large component of luck, chance or randomness. Number two, if you want to invest in mutual funds, don't look at one or two year histories. Consider longer time spans. Any fund manager can have a lucky run once in a while. But fund managers who continuously outperform for a long period of time clearly know their craft. Most importantly, don't buy when the market is overvalued. Use red, yellow, green scale for that. That's quite a helpful tool. Number three, never judge a decision purely by its result. With millions of people playing the stock market, inevitably one or two will make millions out of pure luck. Don't be bothered by that. Don't get envious. Instead, do your research. Think your investments through one at a time. Establish a good decision-making process. That's all you can do. To sum up, the outcome bias predicts that we tend to evaluate decisions based only on the result not the decision-making process. You can decide not to do that. Thank you. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully. To watch more videos about making wiser money decisions, click one of these links here.